Big time boxing returns to Olympia after a quarter of a century with a showdown to match the occasion. A world title fight between two British boxers, eagerly anticipated by 10,000 fight fans and many sporting and showbiz celebrities here tonight. Good evening, the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World coming up live in about five minutes from now. And with me, the man who held that title until it was wrenched from his grasp last year by Chris Eubank. Nigel Benn, good evening to you. Hi. Who are you going for tonight then? I've got a funny feeling, I've got a gut feeling going through, which might pull it off, but I think if um, the way Chris Eubank's prepared, prepared for me, uh, I feel that he will, he will keep on to his title. But I don't know, it's in the balance. Just going for Eubank. Okay, Nigel, thanks very much indeed. Well, the boxers will be out in just a few minutes from now. Two very different personalities with absolutely no love lost between them. Gary Stretch got into boxing as a middle-class teenager, rounding off his amateur career by knocking out George Collins for the National Boys Club title. As a pro, he's lost only once. That was on a cut six years ago. Stretch isn't the traditional hungry fighter. He can reputedly make £10,000 a day modelling. He has eight O-levels and a diploma in business studies to fall back on, but tonight is one examination he's desperate to pass. Christopher Livingston Eubank was born in Dulwich, brought up in Brighton and educated on the streets of the Bronx. As a pro, the record's flawless and a taste for the impeccable surfaces elsewhere in his almost obsessive concern for image and personal style. But his real passion is the family. Two-year-old Christopher Jr. and wife Karen. Just seconds after his fighting spirit had wrested the world title from Nigel Benn, he showed as well the heart of a true romantic. She did, of course, and married life obviously doing Eubank no harm. He looked in perfect shape this morning, weighing in right on the 11 stone 6 limit. The challenger scaled just a pound lighter. It'll be interesting to see if his extra height is an advantage. Stretch seemed determined, but he'd had enough of the verbal warfare, leaving Eubank as ever with the final word. I can't promise you anything. I'm not going there and take her business. What happens, happens. Best man wins. I think I'm the better man. I mean to prove that tonight. Welcome back. The stage set here at Olympia for the entry of the fighters, a contest they're calling the beauty and the best. Let's join Jim Watt and the man who was today named Television and Radio Industries Club Sports Presenter of the Year, Reg Gutteridge. Thank you, Nick. Uh, overwhelmed while we're waiting for the entry of the gladiators. I don't know about beauty and the best, it might be beauty and the post if you listen to these two. And uh, Gary Stretch will become on first with some kind of version of uh, the Rocky theme, the Eye of the Tiger. We can find them up there at the the top hole there they are behind, it's almost like the magician act, isn't it? And he'll love every minute of this, the would-be actor. This, uh, this little lad that came on, we might be able to see him later. That's uh, a stretchy brother. But he's, in fact, he's the one that's getting the cheers, but he's not doing the fighting. Uh, there's so many people there uh, worrying about this uh, would-be actor and uh, singer. Gary stretches, uh, there it is, there, at last we got him, that's, that's the brother in the, in the front and there he's looking very straight ahead as you would expect Gary Stretch and uh, Jimmy Tibbs is working with him in case there's any cuts, he's going to be the cut man and Freddie Roach, a good American boxer, as he's been his trainer, he's trained in Las Vegas and uh, says he's part with some world champion, Virgil Hill, a light heavyweight so although he's been out 11 months, uh, he seemed to think that his timing's okay. Well, sometimes you never can tell until the real action starts. But a very confident character indeed, uh, Gary Stretch from St. Helens, and now living in London. They're trying to cast off the playboy image, and I can tell you this, I saw enough of him as an amateur in most of his pro fights now. He's, he's quite a hard nut behind that... Uh, nice looking face of this. Seen a bit tense uh, at the way in today we thought. Okay, 
champion of the pound inside the middleweight. I mean, he was the light middleweight champion at one time, and they took it away from him for not defending for a year. That was the 11 stone division. So whether this move up or not, we've only had one official middleweight fight, so we don't know whether he can cope with that. Crowd like him, though. I think that's not so much a, as popularity as the current unpopularity, really, of uh, Chris Eubank. And he just uh, said everybody in his last fight would be in for the backheader. And he loves every minute of this. He's so, soaking it up. He's got the stage at the moment stretched and he's going to milk it. Wretched you in the corner there in the white tracksuits. There's enough of them, but uh, the border control won't allow more than three at one time. So let's hope he fights like that, Jimmy. Throw in enough punches before we get the entrance of Eubank. Yeah, well, it does look a little bit tense. He's never been at this level before. Uh, Eubank has been here a couple of times. So the first uh, round or so will be very important for Gary Stretch, I would say. He's uh, a good start, I think. We'll just settle him down there. Uh, so hopefully he'll get that and we'll have a good really exciting match. So there he is, Eubank. As he said, uh, he's going to do the business. Well, if, if he doesn't, he has no business in there. Reigning champion now trying to forget that terrible uh, night he had. He won on points in the 10th round against the Canadian Dan Cherry. And then, as he said, when he backheaded him, uh, it was just something of the sort of spur of the moment, a quick thing that he didn't need to do. And he did an impulse rather than violence. And then he, he faced up and uh, public castigation, really, and uh, 10,000 fine by the Boxing Board of Control. He took that with good grace and apologised to the steward. So, uh, let's face it, he paid his penalty, but nonetheless held on to his championship. Total concentration. Trainer Ronnie Davis, watched around the Southern Area Champion, says he never knows what he's going to do. He said, as long as I can keep him in good condition, that's all I can tell you. He doesn't tell me what he's going to do. I think, I think he's been through a whole battery of trainers in his career, this fellow. Started in America in four-round fights in Atlantic City. more or less interviews his managers rather than let them and now he's having uh, his career guided by tonight's promoter Barry Hearn in this great comeback at uh, the Olympia with about I should think 10,000 people in it's 31 years since I've been here and it's, uh, it's more in than it was then and it's not cheap to get in either it's, uh, it's about 150 pounds for inside I'm told so he's either counting the house if he's on the percentage of the gate Jim we've said it a thousand times He's very different, this fellow, isn't he? He's a one-off. Yeah, you, you never know what to expect from him. I see Stretch walking over to him then. Stretch his corner, push Stretch back again. I think Stretch wanted to go over and eyeball him, gain a psychological advantage. I don't think that'll work with this man. He has an excellent temperament. and sponsored by the Daily Mirror, we are proud to present the main attraction of the evening. A middleweight contest at 11 stone 6 rounds, over 12 rounds, each of 3 minutes duration, for the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World. The judges of the contest are New Jensen of Copenhagen, Mike Gleaner of Chicago, Illinois, and Bob Ballow of Miami, in Florida. Your WBO supervisor is Ed Levine of the United States of America, and your British Boxing Board of Control supervisor is Nick Lee. Your referee for the contest is Tony Orlando of New Jersey, and your timekeeper, Ray Rice of Morton, in Surrey. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing to you, in the red corner of the black shots, the challenger for the title, the former undefeated light middle mini champion of England, 22 wins and 23 contests, Gary Stretch! And his opponent in the blue corner of the black shots, with 26 wins from 26 contests,
I think this is going to be explosive from the Ladies start. And I doubt whether they'll look the at each other early on. This morning, Gary Stretch Shell, 11 stone, 5 pounds. Chris Eubank, 11 stone, 6 pounds. And Eubank doesn't want him to touch him. He said, just, uh, I'll just go through the formality of touching gloves, and the referee called him back. So it's simply the best versus the gifted one. That's a little bit of show business, a touch of circus coming into the fight game these days. So now then, we're all intrigued by this one, I have to say. The, the beauty and the so-called best. So the right-hand forward style then of Harry Strong. It seems to have been in a bit of a grow bag since he last fought. They say he's now six foot two. That's a bit tall indeed for a little weight. I don't know if it's six foot two, it's an advantage or a disadvantage, Reg, against a sneaky counter punch on the Eubank. He could be caught with his chin a little bit high once or twice. But he's certainly pumped up for this one stretch. This referee, Tony Orlando from New Jersey, obviously the WBO have told him they weren't very happy with the referee in the Eubanks' previous fight, and he's going to have strict control here. very untidy, the wrestling that's going on in the opening round, this is ridiculous, I knew, I knew that the, the bad temperedness between them now, is that it's going to really spoil the contest like this, the referee's got to get hold of this very quickly. The stretch is just laying his head on Eubank's face then, so I don't know who's the, the more guilty of the two. He's a good standoff boxer, Gary Stretch, when he wants to be. I don't uh, think he's... I mean, obviously some tactical plan that he and his corner have worked out to try and smother Eubank early on. Eubank has knocked out opponents a bit lively. 23 seconds, wasn't it? The Brazilian he knocked over. Well, Stretch uh, is trying to move around to his own right-hand side as a good southpaw should get outside uh, Eubank's jab. He's moving in the right direction in the first few seconds of the fight and uh, just trying to get outside Eubank's jab. Uh, beat him to the punch. Now he's had trouble fighting going forward, Jim, as you remember, in several fights. Uh, although he didn't have it against Ben, did he, Chris Eubank? He looked the part there. Well, Eubank does like you the, the opponent to lead off. See, he's very poor when he has to go forward. He's got no technique at all. Uh, no rhythm of technique going forward. He does have a sound chin uh, stretch, just tested it slightly then. But he proved against Ben, he has an excellent chin. Well, Eubank's got to do something to get his medals back because every punch that uh, Stretch throws, they're certainly cheering him. Oh, that was a good shot, that was an overarm try, only got away with it, Eubank. See, I think of the two, uh, Eubank does have the, the more sound chin. He has certainly proved that. Uh, and Stretch is carrying his chin a little bit too high. He's a little bit intent on what he's doing, but he wants that chin down between his shoulders a little bit more. Well, let's hope some of that uh, sort of carefully nurtured paint has gone out of it by the end of the first round. It often happens uh, in a championship fight. A little bit of blood behind Gary Stretch's ear, Jim. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Went back to that corner there, and now he's right here. Well, so there's the first first look at either of them. He's not, he won't, he, he decided to sit down after, a bit like uh, going to the office in the morning. He thinks he'll have a rest. Now then, uh, Ronnie Davis has got to say to him now, come on, let's clean this thing up now. We're not going to win anything like that. And there's the rundown, of course, uh, for you, Ben. Unbeaten, you can't knock an unbeaten record. And came right, right in at the middleweight division at 11 stone 6. And uh, Gary Stretch there. Doesn't seem to be worried at all about the little nick somewhere behind me here. I'm not sure. We'll find out as it goes along and then his record. But been out 11 months, remember. But had the middleweight title stripped from him for not defending. And the only defeat was with a cut eye very early in, in his career, so it's uh, that was a bit meaningless. He's virtually unbeaten. Into the second, then scheduled, of course, championship for 12, the World Boxing Organization version. 
and we've got another one, version uh, holder here, the WBA, Mike McCallum's in the audience. Well, I think we can expect the, the, the action to tidy up a little bit now. I think they were both a little bit overpsyched in the first round and uh, a few rules were broken, but I think the fight should settle down now. Stretch didn't allow Eubank to find any rhythm in the first round and I think that's what he must continue to do. He must set the pace, but he must do it carefully. He must keep that chin down and uh, keep moving outside Eubanks' jab. That was the straight sucker right hand uh, through the southpaw jab from Eubank. I don't know how he's going to cope with the southpaw stance yet. He didn't have that much experience against him. But the one thing we're sure of, Jim, if we're judging from the Nigel Ben fight, that certainly Eubank absorbed the good punch and a lot of heart. A couple of times then, Stretch uh, was reaching with the punches. He doesn't want to do that. He needs to be a little bit more compact to step up to Eubank. Uh, keep nice and compact, nice and tight, as I say. If he, if he overreaches, then Eubank is going to catch him with these uh, counter punches he throws. So, as I said in the second round, it's calmed down a bit in terms of... Uh, that silly grappling that we had early on. <laughs> no, no rule that is a knockdown there, the referee quite right, he stopped there and the stretch helped him on his way. Remember, three judges should it go the 12 rounds. Chicago, Miami and Denmark. So a minute to go in the second. Eubank still doesn't know how to mount an attack and sustain it. I know it's early days here and it's, uh, it's a little bit fiery, but uh, as he steps, a little bit does, I mean, he steps forward, he turns south, Paul gets caught with his feet square. He's not very good going forward, but that punch certainly landed. That one seemed to, I don't know if that was balance, a trip, or if that punch shook stretch a little bit. Looked like it, Jim, didn't it? A body punch. But he might have, his right foot forward might have just caught uh, the leg of Eubank there, but he, he looked a bit... Stunned anyway. Countdown then for the end of round two. And then we have to remember that Eubank is a full middleweight, has always been a middleweight with a stretch stepping up to 11 stone, stone six. We don't know how strong, how much power he's going to have. A little bit more work in that round again, Stretch is uh, pinching it, as the uh, boxing traders would say. See, we've seen a lot of evasive boxing from Eubank, but he's not throwing many punches, Reg. Uh, he's causing Stretch to miss, but he's not coming back with enough. Seeing the overhead shot in the replay as well, Jim. Uh, no, you're right, he did that with Sherry. He'd stood off so much in the early rounds, which is why we didn't think that he could win when he had the two points deducted in that fight. I think that just was a, a stumble over each other's feet yes, there, Reg, I, think I don't so. think. The, the, the knees more or less caught there. So we've also got uh, one of the premier referees, uh, Harry, Harry Gibbs, to just look at this and give his opinion. And uh, there's his scorecard. He's, he's given the first two rounds to stretch. Now, of course, that is not efficient. Out for the third. Yeah, that punch was well low from Eubank, uh, obviously accidental. Yeah, well, it's, uh, obviously the height of stretch as well, he's got to be careful where he throws those. That's all we need, if Eubank was disqualified, what kind of uh, posturing would we get then? Well, it's untidy, Reg, and it's down to Eubanks at the moment, he's the one ducking and diving and uh, grabbing around the waist. The stretch is standing up, he's trying to box in the orthodox fashion. Uh, I see that, uh, I realise he's southpaw, but he's, he's trying to box in the, the way we expect. But Eubank's ducking and diving and spoiling a little bit. He likes to be a, to be forced to fight, Jim, doesn't he? And uh, he's just standing off a bit now, stretch, which is smart for him. But Eubank would look better as he did again, or say once again, would better. Uh, that, was, that was a fair old left-hand punch he used there, though. 
and this is the thing, Stretch does carry his head a little bit high and he's reaching with the punches, he did it again there, he's not stepping in with the punch, he's reaching and he's getting caught with his chin too high with the counters. It's been in one or two rough rides, don't worry about that, he had an absolute war, you remember that Jim with the Argentinian Raphael Senna at London Arena and uh, you know his face was banged up and he hung in there the whole time so... He also had a hard battle with uh, Gary Cooper for the British title, I think he had a, a broken nose and he stuck with it, I mean he really has it grit, I don't say his chin is maybe as sound as you Banks but he certainly is brave, no doubt about that another slip the referee has decided oh yeah, watch, shaking his face and saying that wasn't a knockdown but Stretch is absolutely dying to hit him while he's down and I just hope he doesn't minute to go oh, a little bit of kidding to each other now, isn't it well, two actors at work, Eubank shaking his head A bit of posing and threatening and gesturing, but uh, not a lot of punches landed here. See, they're both actually good boxers, they're trying to force a mistake from the other fellow. Yeah, sort of a spiteful chess match, isn't it? <laughs> you see, a stretch could just draw some more leads there from Eubank like that and come over the top with his own southpaw jab. So, uh, Barry Newborn's going to have a word, I think, with uh, Michael Watson, who's hopefully going to fight the winner. Michael, you are next in line. Do you think you'll be fighting him? Will he still be champion so far? Well, I hope so. You know, um, Gary's really working behind his left hand very well. If, it doesn't get, if Gary doesn't get too involved, and gets drawn into a fight, I believe we could have seen a new champion. Really? really? I mean, is the fight going the way you think it, you thought it would go? No, I didn't. I thought Chris Eubank would, would have been dictating the pace, but I've given the first round to Gary, and also I've given him the third round. Right, now, Eubank does look very awkward coming forward, doesn't he? he I wouldn't say he's a dictator, he's more of a counter-puncher. Gary seconds. doesn't have to get involved into a fight. You know, Gary, Gary's got to make him win this fight. He's got a very good left hand, and I believe so far, Gary's winning the fight. So there we go, we're into round four. And the opinion of Michael Watson sitting next to Mike McCullum, who beat him for the Championship of the World. So Eubank still not comfortable coming forward, Reggie. Not a good attacking boxer at all. He really makes some dreadful mistakes and uh, ends up with his chin in some funny positions. Uh, Stretch is the, the, the more composed at the moment. He's quite happy, I think, the way things are going. He's showing a bit more care. He's not quite as reckless as he was in the first couple of rounds. He's settled down and he, I think he's trying to draw the leads now and come back with the, the counter-punching southpaw jab. Actually, before the contest, you could say, well, with their styles, that they do a little bit of spoiling of each other. It's always on the cards. A minute gone in the fourth round, then. In the live from the Olympia, the, the first show for 31 years or so we've See, had here. A very impressive haul. Jim? Well, it's there again. Eubank tried to mount an attack, missed with a couple of punches, and ended up having to duck and dive away down low to get himself out of trouble. See, when he commits himself, if his punches don't land, he doesn't know what to do after that. He's never really learned uh, how to attack. He, he doesn't have any fluency or continuity about his attack, and it's just single punches, swings, then he has to duck and dive if those punches miss. But I think Eubank is going to have to turn this into a kind of more physical contest. I don't think he's doing he's winning any prize, he's standing off in boxing stretch. As the longer reach, he, he's quite nifty on his feet. Eubank is going to have to use his strength and his middleweight power and uh, draw stretch into a real battle, I think. Just a warning there from referee Orlando, uh, not to duck too low there. Eubank should not be below the waistband actually. 
The referee's going to have to have a stern word, I think, with you, Bank. He's ducking every time Stretch comes in, he's really ducking low with his head. See, this is not really clever boxing from Eubank. He's just diving. As soon as Stretch comes close, he's just diving low. I don't know if I've said it to you before in contest, you can never really read for Shubank, and the only boxer, oh yes, he's, he's doing a bit of taunting now, and remember that's what the Canadian did last time, and the usual separation at the end of the ball, get back to your own corner, he really dislikes this man. He's so casual and calm about it all, isn't he? Well, I must say that uh, Stretch is looking absolutely full of confidence, isn't he? Not that I'm surprised by that, having seen quite a bit of him. He, he always fancies his luck, and why not? He won a championship, he won a boys' club championship. So almost uh, the wash and brush up in the corner there, with little bits of Vaseline around the face to stop the chafing of the gloves. And overhead replay, Jim. Well, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Well, that, that was the, the couple of nice little sharp counter punches from Eubank. So out for round five. Eubank trying to draw Stretch in, Stretch doing the right thing, the fight's going his way, so why should he get commit himself, just keep things going the way they're going. See Stretch is just trying to draw the leads from Eubank, and this is, this is the right way to box Eubank because he is not very good at all at attacking, so Stretch I think has tumbled this, he's, he's just standing in front of him trying to draw the leads, and he knows that uh, Eubank uh, is really vulnerable after the leads, I mean look at that for a right hand lead. Times when uh, Eubank looks like, like he's otherwise engaged him. Yeah, well, he certainly his technique leaves a lot to be desired. And uh, when opponent forces him to come forward, see, I mean, you, these attacks are single punches. Low punch as well, that one. That one was well off target, so yeah. He's, he's got to watch that because another low punch will get deducted a point, then the referee will point to the uh, judges to do that. But a second, a hip, hit and hope we're seeing from Eubank, he's just throwing these swings, single swings. He's not really backing Stretch up into the ropes where he has nowhere to move. So it's no good him shaking his head and saying you didn't hurt, they're still scoring. They don't have to hurt because he's coming back with nothing. Things are certainly going Gary Stretch's way here. Eubank is going to have to turn this into a, a real bloodbath, I think, because the standing off boxing is not doing him any good. See, we have to look to Eubank to be that bit stronger than Stretch, but he's not using that strength. Quite impressed with the referee, Jim. Mind you, I said that last time and he turned out to a bit of a disappointment, but this fellow's been very strong, isn't he, Tony Orlando? Yeah, well, no doubt he's been well told about how the, the previous fight with Eubank got out of hand. Now, Eubank apologising for a low blow. That's the first little bit of sportsmanship we've seen between the two tonight. Stretch has lost a little bit of his composure now, Reggie. He's, he's under slight pressure now. He's lost his rhythm. Eubank beginning to impose himself a little bit on Stretch now. As he said before the contest, that uh, Stretch said he won't have to come looking for me. I'll be there, all right? I'll, I won't be running. And I was surprised when people were weighing up at the fight that they thought he would. Well, simply the best, not at the moment. Certainly I haven't got him ahead, and I know Jim Watt hasn't. And uh, 
we'll have a look at Harry Gibbs's version. As I say, it's an unofficial version anyway when, uh, when it comes up on the screens. And there it is. The overall, as I say, he's now got him a two points in front. But uh, after judging the last fight, uh, with Eubank and Sherry, remember, the, the, ju the judges still uh, had uh, Eubank in front, so you can't tell. That's very unofficial, of course. It's just a, a good look from one of the most, world's most experienced referees who's retired, but he's still a judge with the World Boxing Council. <laughs> Round six of this 12-rounder for the WBO Middleweight Championship. Well, for a little spell in that previous round there, I mean, this is stretch, this is ridiculous what stretch is doing here. Oh, he's done it. Yeah, that was a stupid thing stretch did then. Stupid thing, he just he's he taken, jumped he's taken the top a of point you. away from stretch now, that's, uh, well, he's in order to do that, I said he was a strong referee. Well, Eubank committed the foul, if you like, he ducked low, he dived in low to keep his chin out of harm's way, but stretch virtually jumped on top of him like a wrestler, that was a foolish thing to do, and it's cost him dearly. Yeah, that's a shot, that's really shaking stretch, that's the punch, stretch wants to get his hands up, and he wants to clutch down, that's what he wants to do, take a count, get his head clear. Got to push him back to the neutral corner now. It's the first real banger that Eubanks has landed in the sixth round. He hasn't recovered, right? He hasn't recovered from it either, but he's had a good look at him, the referee. He is still stunned, Reg. Yep. yep. He's done him all right. He's done nothing, or virtually nothing, until this round, and now he's made it pay Eubank. Second count, three knockdowns, Jim. No, he stopped it without waiting for the third knockdown. So in soccer's beat the boy done well. He came from nowhere there, uh, well more or less nowhere. I mean certainly the unofficial score by Harry Gibbs uh, had stretched a couple of points ahead and then suddenly he, he got hit and well it didn't only run out of gas him, the stamina drained from him. Yeah, well, it, was a, it was a good shot, Reg. We did say that Eubank's chin well, well, was probably the, the chin department was where the Eubank was really strongest. It was a good shot that got Stretch, and Stretch never really recovered. So over it came, it caught him with his chin too high again. He's been boxing with his chin high all the way through the contest. You can see the effect. There it goes, bang. Now that shot really shook him up. Yeah, the This is where he well. should have touched down without getting knocked down. He should have went down onto one knee, and he may have recovered from the first punch, but he didn't. He took another couple, and he never got a chance to recover. Up he came. You can see looking at his eyes, Reg. He's not with it at all. And that was only a punch round at the ear hole. That wasn't even a solid shot. Just knocked him over because his legs had nothing left. Well, he's entitled to the plaudits tonight. He's taken a bit of stick early on and he's come through it. He's punched his way through it. He might enjoy the, uh, the ogre role, as it were, the intimidator, but to be fair to him, he's, he's done the business. The referee, Tony Orlando, has stopped the contest. The winner, and still the So MC Allen Hughes then is giving the official verdict, as if you we don't already know and of course it's like the, the London Underground in the rush hour in there as usual and the WBO belt being put on there by uh, Ed Levine from Miami representing the and WBO and, and uh, the promoter Barry Hearn who's obviously pleased with his night's work of first comeback show at the Olympia and a whole battery of uh, cameramen waiting now to see what's uh, Stretch is uh, doing and maybe having something to say. Well, quite a spectacular finish, wasn't it, Jim? Now, well, an emphatic victory for the uh, Eubank, but we can't see really a, a tremendous performance. He was struggling again to find any rhythm. Stretch was boxing well, we had him ahead in points, but uh, it's the end that counts, and uh, the ending was uh, good for Eubank. Well, Chris, you held on to your championship, but I have to tell you, up to the point that you stopped him, you were well, looked as if you were behind on points. Well, you must have been seeing another fight. Let me talk. To, let me talk about something what's more important. In Iraq, there's people who are dying, and I'll, I, on behalf of the boxing fraternity, would like to thank the government and the U.S. government for helping. Um, everyone wishes sooner, but um, better late than never. Now, about the fight. Yes. Gary Stretch, um, a fine athlete. I take nothing away from the man. The man's cut me. First time I've been cut in my career. Can we just have a look at that? Just, just across there, right? 
got it. Carry on. I'll go home. I'll go home to my wife, Karen, and uh, Karen, you can look after me. Okay. Um, anything else you want to know? Yes, sir. I, w I want to know whether really you thought that was a good performance from you tonight, because I think most people would have had you behind on points. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, I knew I would stop this opponent from the very first punch he hit me with. He still has the power of a light middleweight. I am a, a middleweight of um, phenomenal strength, according to the middleweights in the world. So I would say to um, you, in my opinion, I you think it was a good, uh, a good performance. When you look back, you, you may yourself for looking a little awkward when you come forward but there's one thing about you Chris you can take a punch and you can finish because we can show you the closing stages now can we have a look at the closing stages here Chris Gary listen I ain't gonna have feelings man you right well we, Gary we're not going to show that because we've got a chance to talk to Gary come in Gary Gary, you, you, you were doing well until the end. Of course, that's what boxing's all about when you yeah, get stopped. It was a great shot. Uh, I'm really sorry to everyone who supported me. I, I tried to make them proud. And I'm very sorry, but let me wish Chris all the best in his future. And well done. Did you, Gary? Gary, you were doing very well until that last round. I felt fine. Uh, I thought that Chris couldn't hurt me at that stage, but that's boxing. Suddenly, I got it with a good shot. And, Okay. That's uh, the rest is history. Chris, you're still world champion. Gary. Don't want to take that away. Thank you very much. Well, the views from the two fighters after that breathtaking finish. We'll have more views here from Olympia in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Olympia, where Chris Eubank has held on to his world middleweight title. And with me now is the man who Eubank beat last year, Nigel Ben. <laughs> Sorry to rub that one in. No what worries. did you think of the fight, first of all? It was okay. Is that I all? It, I don't think it, it, it compares to any feet of me and Chris Eubanks. And Eubanks fight, he, um, he's still the champion. And, uh, it's quite a turnaround in the end, wasn't it? Pardon? A turnaround in the end. I mean, Eubank was behind Yeah, I, I feel the only thing that really um, bothered Eubanks was the South Pole stance. I don't think he, um, he studied um, the South Pole stance, and I think that was the only problem Look. that he really had. This is the first knockdown now. What do you make of this? He, Eubanks, right out of the blue. Is, Eubanks is a very strong puncher. And he, he's accurate. I mean, uh, and, and he packs a punch. I think anyone over 11 stone can pack a punch. Here it is again from another angle. Yeah, you know, in, it's not only just, I mean, um, he's thrown a lot, he's missing a lot, but he's knowing what shots to throw. And uh, I think Gary being out of the ring like 12 months and moving up to middleweight. And, and this is how it all finished here, Nigel. Exhausted he was. Absolutely exhausted. Nigel, for the time being, thanks very much. Let's get back down to uh, ringside now and join Gary Newbomb. Well, with me is Mike McCallum and Mike Watson. Mike McCallum, the WBA champion, and for a lot of people, the best world champion at this weight. What did you think of Chris Eubank and that performance tonight? It was a pretty good performance. He did what he had to do. Uh, he waited the storm, he take his time, and he won a good fight. Do you fancy fighting Eubank? Definitely. Uh, my, my mission is to unify the title. And if he's in fact the champion, definitely I looking forward to fighting. McKay and Mike Watson, your fight is now definitely on for the summer against Chris Eubank. Are you gonna take him out? Most certainly. It's a fight everybody's been waiting for. I've waited patiently. Now I've got the opportunity to take the title away from Chris Eubank. There was a lot to learn tonight. He's not very good coming forward, is he? But he can punch. I've known that a very long time. Uh, he's not very effective coming forward. I'll say it's a good counter punch, but I've seen a lot of balls tonight and I'm looking forward to getting it on the Christian Bank. Thank you very much. Both of you, thank you. Certainly a very interesting middleweight division at the moment, isn't it? Right, it's time to say goodnight to you from Olympia. A fight between Chris Eubank and Gary Stretch that means Eubank ends up with his world title still intact. He is still the WBO middleweight champion of the world. Next on ITV this Sunday, the Rumblows League Cup final, but for now from us all at Olympia.